Ravel Maria, lecturer in the Department of Political Science and Public Administration. Today, we are going to start one of the concepts or several concepts which are in the subject or the course of the resistance theory and the public bureaucracy. It is called OPA 102. I hope you will enjoy this session. So, as I said, we have two concepts. The concept of power and the politics. These are very important in the realm of political science and also in our normal life. Each and every one of us has heard something about power in politics. So, let us see what these two concepts tell us. What do they mean in our lives? So, organizations are made of both human and material resources. It is the human resource or resources which are very important compared to other types of resources. You know, the organization has human resource, has physical resources, has financial resources, and what have you. However, human resources play an important role in achieving organization goals. In fact, human resources can be considered as the center. In trying to transform or convert the material resources of the organization, choices need to be made. These decisions or choices involve some kind of politics, while the person making the choices or decisions uses some power to ensure that his, her choices or her choices or decisions are accepted. Everyone in an organization has power in various degrees or in certain degrees. Without power, people cannot plan and achieve goals, which are very vital for the survival of any kind of organization. All organizations depend or have goals. Without peer power, people cannot motivate themselves or others manage their careers effectively, mobilize resources, or protect their rights. Without power, organizations cannot compete effectively in national and international markets. Power is the capacity of one party to influence the other, as the one party wants. People can act from the basis of legitimate, reward, cohesive, informational, expert, and reference power. All these are basis of power. Like many other words in English language, power has no single definition. So there are several, several definitions of power. I will quickly explore them, but I will argue to go and read, revisit the literature to enhance your knowledge in that particular area. Power is the ability to employ force and mobilize resources, energy, and information on behalf of a preferred goal. So, there is a scholar who gave this definition. These definitions are not ours, they are not mine. These definitions were given by scholars. And you should be able to mention them or cite them when we are doing an academic work. Power is the probability that a person can carry out his or her own will despite resistance. This is according to Max Weber, 1947. Another definition of power is the ability of persons or groups to impose their will on others despite resistance through deterrence, either in the form of withholding regularly supplied rewards or in the form of punishment, in a mismatch as, uh, as the former, as well as the latter, constitute an effect 
negative sanction. So, you impose power on others for them to perform what they wouldn't have done. Power is defined also as a force that is that in behavior that will not have occurred if the forces had not been present. This is according to Matthew 1962. Another definition goes like this. The ability of one person or group of persons to influence behavior of others, that is to change the, the probabilities that the others will respond in a certain way. At an individual level, so power can be exercised by a group, but also by an individual. At an individual level, power is the ability of A to influence B, to do something that A does not desire. However, at the organization level, it is the ability of a leader or a dominant coalition to use resources to achieve stated goals. So, remember, there is a use of resources. So, sometimes power depends on the resources you have. Another definition. This is by Sand Salansik. Power is the ability to get things done the way one wants them to be done. According to Robbins, power is the ability to influence and control anything that is of value to others. According to Bucharach, Bucharach and Lola, power is that force that results in behavior that will not have occurred if the force are not being present. The ability of one person or group of persons to influence the behavior of others. So, power can be in different forms. As you have seen, there are many, many definitions of power. It is your duty to choose the most appropriate as per the situation, as per how it is used in a organization setting. So, we have power can be subject, we can be in terms of, we can have power in terms of, we call it subjective nature of power. Power is the ability a person has to influence another. The extent of this power is, however, determined to a large extent by the perception of the term power by the person at whom the power is directed. Sometimes people perceive, they perceive that somebody has power. In real sense, that person does not have that type of power or the extent that people think he has. It may be more important what a person thinks a superior officer's power is than what in reality it is. Sometimes the officer has very little power but pretends he has a lot of power. Managers may take advantage of this phenomenon by pretending they have more power than they actually have. That is, we call it bluffing. If a manager's bluffing succeeds, the effect is exactly the same as if the one bluffing actually possess, possesses with that form of power. Thus, power is a delicate phenomenon. So, most of the circumstances, power is a perception. You perceive that that individual has power or I am powerful. You cannot see power, but you perceive somebody has power or I have power. So, when the use of power is acquired, it is used to achieve organizational objectives or certain purposes. Power just is not that there for the sake of it. It is there to be used. In an organizational setting, it has to, to help achieve organizational goals or purposes. 
Appropriate use of power leads to the achievement of desired goals and objectives. As I said, all organizations have objectives and goals that need to be achieved. If those objectives and goals are not achieved, then you don't expect an organization to survive or to become a successful one. In ineffective use of power or failure to use power when the need arises has been described as a major cause of effective, defective function of a system. This is possible among inexperienced managers and those who lack it. When a manager does not have the courage to use power or misuses power, then you, you expect the, the, the organization to be in trouble. And this is always the case in our countries or with different organizations. Managers sometimes misuse power or they don't use the power they have appropriately. Having said that, let us go through the characteristics of power. One of the characteristics of power is an equal distribution. Power is not distributed equally among individuals or members of the organization. Most of the time, you have the powerful at the top, who are more, uh, uh, people at the top, the leaders, the managers, the directors, and the chief executive have more power that they subordinate at the lower level of organization. So, power is not equally distributed among members since different individuals have varying types of knowledge, skills, experience, education, and hierarchical authority. Therefore, likely to differ in terms of their ability to influence others. <laughs> a person, a professor, maybe, is assumed to have more power in terms of skills and knowledge than many others than a, a, a tutorial system, for example, or a lecturer, or a senior lecturer. That is the assumption. People with experience, a person with more experience who has worked for 10 years, maybe has more power than a person who has worked for two years. Now, try to see, or take an example of organization, and think of people who are more powerful than others because of their education level, experience, knowledge, and what you are People differ in terms of values. People differ on, on, the, on, on the gain and the exercise of power. Experience shows that the amount of power exercised by an individual is the function of his own power motive. So, sometimes power is used to help the society. Like how the, the, perhaps the, the, the president of the country uses power to make sure there is socio-economic development in the country. A country can be a huge organization. So, the value, the motive of using the, that power, also sometimes determine the degree of power that individual has. Another characteristic of power is the resistance to change. How a holder resists the attempt to change distribution of power. Persons who strive for power and they are able to acquire it are unwilling to share it with the other members of the group. That's why we will see later in this lecture how politics is used to maintain power. So, people do not want to relinquish power. They don't. They want to remain in power. That's why there are rules and regulations which control people in power. That's why, you see, maybe the director will stay for three years at the investor level. Or maybe the president will stay for five years, then another five years. It is over. The nature, human beings want to hold power. That's why we put rule and regulation to control it. That is, that is not for an individual, but for the all, for, for, for most people, all the entire man. Power losers attempt to form coalition. When you lose power, you form a coalition. Power losers normally try to increase their power individually, and when they fail, they form coalition. Another characteristic of power dependence relationship. This is an important characteristic of power. When a person is more dependent 
on a person, more power is exerted on him or her. Power is specific. Power is exercised in a specific time. Maybe, let me tell you what. You might be the vice chancellor or the chief executive of a particular organization. But you cannot call an employee at night and say, come and help me. Because power is exercised at a specific situation or occasion. Maybe in office area. Maybe when you want people to perform a certain type of function uh, assignment. Power cannot be exercised all the time by all the people. It has to be specific. The VC, the deputy vice chancellor academics, the director, the head of the department. They all exercise power in different time. Depending on the situation, what they are doing, what task they want people to accomplish. Reciprocal power or reciprocal relationship. Power relationship in an organization is reciprocal because it exists in a relationship between two or more persons. There is no way you can exercise power alone. It is based on two ways traffic. Influence the other than being influenced. For example, if you are head of department, you might influence others, but the director or the dean will influence you, will give you directives. All this is in order to achieve organization goals. Power can expand your contract. Higher positions lead to more power, and the opposite case is also true. When you are at the top, you have more power, but at the lower level of administration, you have a little bit less power. There are types of power. We have legitimate power. Legitimate power is also known as position power. It is delivered from the position a person holds in an organization's hierarchy. Job description, for example, requires junior workers to report to managers and give managers the power to assign duties to, the, to their juniors. As I said, it is that position which gives you power. That's why if the chief executive travels, he can assign somebody else, John, or a man, or a son, to, 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 to discharge duties in that office. So it is not John or a son. It is he is serving that particular position. So that is what we call the legitimate power. In the other things, it is called the authority. For position power to be exercised effectively, the person wielding it must be deemed to have earned it legitimately. See? Through a particular position. An example of legitimate power is that held by a company CEO, the, the CEO of the Open University, the Vice Chancellor, or the CEO of CRLB Bank, or the CEO of any other organization you can mention. Just think of any other, or any other organization of your choice. We have this what we call expert power. Knowledge is power. When you have knowledge, you are powerful. People will come to you and ask you a number of questions. You will help, you will help, you will help people to resolve certain complicated or difficult issues. Expert power is derived from possessing knowledge or expertise. For example, my friend who is an IT expert, always he will help me to present this lecture. Without him, I won't be able to do it. So he has power, this guy. The opinion, ideas, and decision of people with expert power are held high in regard by other employees, and hence greatly influence their actions. That's why we call. Can I come? Can you come to my office and help me fix this computer? Possession of expert power is normally a stepping stone to other sources of power, such as legitimate power. For example, a person who holds expert power can be promoted to senior management, thereby giving him legitimate power. See, when you are a stunt lecturer, you go for a PhD, you come back, then you publish a few papers. Quickly, you gain more, you have power because you have gained knowledge, but there is a possibility you will be promoted to a head of department, to a director, 
even later to the deputy vice, vice chancellor and what have you. Reference, referent power. Referent power is derived from the interpersonal relationships that a person cultivates with other people in the organization. People possess a reference power when others respect and like them. Referent power arises from charisma, as charismatic persons influence others via admiration, respect, and trust others have for her, for her or him. Look, we all know the very young as an man. People respect him. He's a charismatic guy. They respect him because of what he has done. He attracts people. Referent power is also derived from personal connections that a person has with key people in the organization's hierarchy, such as the CEO. It is the perception of the person, personal relationship that she has or he has that he relates power over others. You say, okay, let me associate with Mr. Hamza. Why? Because Mr. Hamza has a good relationship with the CEO. If I know Mr. Hamza, then he can easily see the CEO or gain some advantage from the CEO. So that is referent power derived from personal connections. Now let us come to cohesive power. We all know cohesive, forcing people to do things they want to do. Cohesive power is derived from a person's ability to influence others via threats, punishment, or sanctions. Sometimes you don't need to use power, rather you threat to use it. Okay, I will fire you guys if you don't record your lectures, if you don't teach, if you don't attend classes, if you don't uh, adhere to punctuality. A junior staff member may work late to meet deadline to avoid disciplinary actions from his boss. See? Some people will work even late, prepare at night because they don't want to be punished because the superior has power. We all know guys. Cohesive power is therefore a person's ability to punish, fire, or reprimand other employees. Cohesive power helps control the behavior of employees by ensuring that they adhere to the organization policies and norms. I hope you all know. Can you think of a powerful person in an organization or, 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 any, or any institution that is able to punish you? Can you think of an organization, dear colleagues? I hope you now know what is cohesive power. Reward power. Reward power arises from the ability of a person to influence the allocation of incentive in an organization. These incentives include salary increment, positive appraisal, and promotions. In some organizations, the CEO can decide to give bonuses. That is power because he can reward. He can say, okay, let us give incentives to our employees, especially those who are always punctual, those who are always, those who always meet deadlines. So he has the ability to reward. In an organization, people who will reward power tend to influence the actions of other employees. Reward power, if used well, greatly motivate employees. But if it is applied through favoritism, the white power can greatly demoralize employees and diminish their output. And this is always the case in many organizations. You find people are doing the same kind of assignment, but when they ask for something from their boss, or when incentives are dished out, they don't get the same. Now, if that happens, then the boss is in the position of making the organization fail to achieve its organizational goals because it will demotivate employees instead of motivating them. Personal characteristics. The most marked personal characteristics that is social power is charisma, as I said earlier. Sorry, this is we have already discussed it. So Power also can be dished out because of the opportunity somebody has. And this is also the position that somebody has. This particular source of power 
is embedded in the formal structure, as I said earlier. So it's because of the position or the opportunity the person has. So my dear friends, we all know what power is, how to use it properly to help organization achieve organization goals. So I expect you guys, when you complete your studies, you are able, or even now, you are able to use power appropriately to help organization achieve its organization goals. We don't study this just for the sake of it. I hope it will help you to improve you when you manage your resources, when you manage big organization, even your families. Then let us move to another concept which relates, which relates with power. This is we call politics. Organizational politics. The term politics has been used for many, many years. We all know what is politics. Maybe we don't know. Maybe we are confused. What is politics? The term politics in Israel is derived from the Greek word politics, meaning a city or a state. Polity, a city or a state. It was originally used by Aristotle in the year 384 to 382 before Christ. In his book, Politics to me, the affairs of Greeks. No, I mean the year uh, 384. 322, Anna Domini, after Christ. In his book, Politics to Me, the Affairs of the Greek City or State. In, the, in his view, man is a political animal who, by interacting with others or with another or more persons, produces a relationship called political. Okay? That interaction with others, that relationship of power, is what we call politics. There is another scholar known as Harold Laswell, a very big scholar. In 1951, he writes that politics is essentially the struggle for positions of power and the influence by which those who succeed in mobilizing such positions in society are able to make decisions that affect lives of every, every citizen within the country. So, this is power at the national level. He also famously said, Politics is who gets what, when, and how. That is Harold Lassman. By implication, politics can be practiced by all persons in both government and organization with the objective to struggle for power. So politics is a vehicle to achieve power. Influence, dealing with conflict, bargaining, reconciliation, resolutions, and consensus. Power politics is used to resolve conflict, to influence, to bargain, and whatever. The term politics is derived from the uh, sorry. So thus there are two types of politics, namely state politics and organizational politics. Organizational politics relates to behavior that are outside those in which the organization has taken a specific position for, for or against the behavior intended to obtain selfish and individual ends that are opposed to the ends of other in the organization. Organizational politics may focus on the goals of groups as well as individuals, and they may well be involved behavior that are harmful the organization as a whole. So politics can be for the betterment of an organization, but it can also be for its detriment. Unproductive and uneven destructive behavior and competition between groups and individuals can occur when leaders do not see and correct this source of uncertainty. So whenever you find people talking about the manager, about whatever they are talking. That is politics. There is a solid word for it, Manum, but it's part and parcel of politics in an organization. Organization differs in specific nature of its politics. Several dimensions are offered to cater for different types of organization with different political problems. So, the politics of a particular organization, the open university, may be 
It's different. So the politics of another university, the, open, the, the University of Aresa, Zumbe, and in any other university, they are totally, they, they might be different because of the nature of a particular organization, because of the competition that exists in that particular organization, and what have you. Strategies for reusing, preventing, and managing the dysfunctional aspects of organizational politics include the following. So, as a manager, as a superior, you need to be able to manage politics. If you are not managed, they might make an organization fail to achieve its goals. Or it can affect productivity. Make it clear that what basis or if, if it's in terms of evaluation, make sure that the evaluation is fair, then you will reduce competition and complaints. Differentiate reward among high and low performers. You have people who are, are really performing, and you have others who are not performing, but they all are rewarded the same. What do you expect? You won't be managing politics in that particular organization. Make sure the rewards are immediately and directly related to performance as possible. You just don't, you, you, you don't just reward for, every, for everything and anything. You say, okay, this reward relates with maybe punctuality, with accomplishment, timely accomplishment of goals, etc., etc. Further, try to reduce competition. Most of the time, unharmful harmful politics in organization are as a result of what we call competition. People compete for positions, for resources, try to reduce those. Try to reduce source of competition among managers. For example, if there are scarce resources, put rules and regulations to manage those resources. Replace, resources, uh, replace resource competition with externally oriented goals and objectives. So, tell people, you can work outside, you can do this and that, in order to achieve your objectives. Set objectives that are broader. Try also to break existing political groups. When highly cohesive political uh, empire exists, break them apart by removing or splitting the most dysfunctional subgroups. You might find this guy or a certain guy in the department is quarreling with the head of the department all the time. Okay, my friend, now you are being transferred to town from the HQ, from the helicopter of the university. Eh? You have a group of people who are always trying to sabotage the management. They say, okay, you break that group. Or you take the leader, that is it's, 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 the, the politics will be managed, you will have, you will have managed politi harmful politics in that particular organization. If you are an executive, be keenly sensitive to managers whose model of operation is the personalization of political patronage. They protect others, nepotism. They protect few and the royal few and ignore others. Be very sensitive. So, there are several definitions of politics by different scholars. According, so as we said earlier, with the power, which has several definitions, many, many definitions, the same with politics. According to Nitzbeck, there are at least six ways to build political power based depending on the particular focus. Superiors, peers, coordinates, sorry, subordinates, resources, knowledge, and authority. I repeat, according to Nitzbeck, there are at least six ways to build political power base, depending on the particular focus. Superiors, peers, subordinates, resources, knowledge, and authority. Others are sponsorship. A person attaches to the one who is already in a higher position, superior. This is the boss of someone in the immediate chain of command. Certain rules will be followed, which include totally committed, loyal, 
and the obedient and always expressing gratitude and attention. To gain power also, one will attach himself to other good, what we call an alliance. The focus is the one is peers by forming alliances, coalitions, or networks. It is expected in individuals in that group will benefit from collective action. For example, this way we, 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 we form an alliance, they call it Utasa, in order to do what? To gain power or to influence decisions. Because politics is all about influencing decisions. There's also another way of acquiring power. And this is empire building. Building a political base with subordinates is called empire building. The manager seeks to surround himself with people. This can be done first by attracting rewards and retaining highly skilled people and allow them to be to, to allow them the freedom to perform. In this case, the manager will not allow good subordinates to be promoted. And this second strategy is to acquire excellent subordinates through assuming responsibility for other units, which is called power grabbing. You have heard of a manager or a superior, or even a chief executive who is not that much knowledge, but he has he surrounded himself with people who are extremely intelligent and knowledgeable, and he doesn't allow these people to move. He gives them incentive and whatever, so that these guys remain and help him to perform. It is important as a manager to know who are the people surrounding you. If you don't have intelligent and powerful and knowledgeable people, people who can perform, then you will become a failure. It's very important. You can also acquire power or budgeting or politics through budget, you can acquire power through the use of budget. Politics is played by appropriating resources through budgeting. This is the one of the best strategies for political power building. Control financial resources in order to, to improve one's position. An office or a position which has the resources, financial muscle, is the most powerful office in an organization. That's why you have heard people say, I don't care about the position. I care about the resources I have. Some people are promoted to higher positions, but they don't, they don't want to leave because the position they are at, they are right now, help them to acquire more resources, has more resources than the position they are, they are promoted to. We have also expertise. Based on the principle that knowledge is powerful in today's organization, with this approach, individuals' skills and their knowledge are emphasized in the importance of the unity of the total, or as it is stressed. The introduction of computer system, management information system, etc., are a good example to this. So, if you are an expert in an area, you can play politics. And politics is all about acquiring power. Another one is called loading. The approach is a game in which the legitimate authority is misused. Otherwise, the manager uses bluff, faking, etc., to influence the others far in excess of what is authorized to him. For example, purchasing agent of a larger company, tell the seller representative from supply from supply firm that he is the only person making decision on what is purchased, from whom and how much. In reality, such decision is taken by the director who is authorized. So, some, some people will tell, if you don't see this particular organization, you won't get any. In real sense, they are not even powerful. They are just bluffing. It is important to explain the organization politics become more prevalent and more important for the individual at each higher level of management as the competition becomes tougher. So, most of the time, competition is more at the higher level than the lower level. At the lower level, we compete, you compete, but at the higher level, there is much, too much competition compared to the lower level. Dear colleagues, we have gone through the concept of power and politics. These two concepts are related, and they are very important for managers and for organizations. If power and politics 
they are not utilized properly. If the manager cannot manage politics within an organization, if power is not used appropriately, then you don't expect an organization to achieve organizational goals. We have all seen people misusing power for sexual favors. People misusing power and become corrupt. This is not good for any kind of organization. Public organization, business organization, even small organization like families. So, it is important you take your time, revisit the literature, and read more about the, these two concepts of power and politics. Because what you have presented here is very little compared with what is in the literature. This is to give you a highlight, to, to show you the way so that you are able to pursue more knowledge in this particular area. Thank you very much for listening.